look at NAB. All right. Uh, the Naminta Anomaly Benchmark is uh, Python 2.7, and we're going to create it and, and we're going to um, review some work that a colleague has done on this. Um, and let me, okay, so I want to bring up an email, but I don't want to show like all my emails on Twitch, so let me just move this over. <clears throat> And uh, we have been working with Ian Danforth, who used to be a wearer, uh, or used to be an employee of Nementa ages ago. Let's see, here we go. All right, so here's the code I'm gonna be reviewing, or the different, This is all public at this point. So <clears throat> this is Ian, he, he gave me permission to show this. So, um, so he's helping us uh, get uh, Python, basically nab the detectors and separate it out into another repository so that we can, yeah, so now, so there's a nab detectors repository. Um, so here, so the, so the problem is with uh, in a benchmark like this, you want to be able to run it in any environment. So I might, so I might make an R solution for it. I might make a Python solution, a C plus plus solution, solution, Lisp. I don't know, whatever, um, Elixir. And you can't. Uh, you you basically to get your contribution or your detector into the system, you have to write it to write out some files that have like your um, scores in them, or your anomaly indications, essentially, and then there's a scoring function that that will take those values and score them. Um, let's do a quick review of this. Uh, so the Nemitz anomaly benchmark contains data and scripts. Um, this is a new benchmark, and the difference between this and most machine learning benchmarks is this is a time-based benchmark. It's an unsupervised. Um, it's assuming you're unsupervised. So we're, we're testing how well learning algorithms can predict anomalies in unlabeled streaming sequential data, um, which is of course what HTM is pretty good at. So we wouldn't, and there were no benchmarks that we could compare ourselves with anyone else, so we created this. So there's over 50 labeled real world and artificial um, time series data sets and they're all scalar values over time. Um, and so in this repository are the tools that allow you to easily run this benchmark on your, uh, using your own anomaly detection algorithms. Um, and what we're gonna do is separate this because this is written in Python 2. And um, I think we made some assumptions about the Pyth there would be a Python 2 runtime for running these detectors. So if you want to create an entry in the benchmark, you create a detector. I haven't done this, so, but, uh, but there, there is a, a research paper on this. Here it is, if you want to take a look. Well, you've got the link. You've got the link. Does this, do I have a, I don't have a nab. <laughs> I don't have a nab button, but I put the link in here. I'll, 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 I'll copy it. Copy link address, put it in here. This is the, the paper that explains all the logic behind this benchmark. Okay. Um, oh, and here's a link to the NAB white paper. I don't know what this is exactly. Is this, this is, I thought that was the NAB white paper. paper. No, 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 this is different. So this is probably very similar, but I think it specifically tells you how NAB works. I don't want to get too, too deep into uh, understanding NAB. I have a general under idea of how it works. But what I want to do is review the work that Ian has done to split this up into two repositories. So essentially we have a detectors repository 
and then we've got so this is sort of the new master read me what it would say so let's go through through this um, so it's basically the same type of prose uh, yeah, entry points info is still this wiki hopefully this doesn't have to change and everything is is posted to the scoreboard in the readme so so we just keep a scoreboard in the readme if someone submits and these are all of the different algorithms that are competing in this benchmark right now um, if someone submits a new entry a new detector then we we essentially have to I mean they, they have to run it in their environment, create these files that represent the scores or represent the anomalies that they found in all of these data sets. And then run NAB, which has a scoring code that will score all of these and um, do its logic. So NAB's got specific scoring like um, for false, false positives can be treated differently than false negatives. Um, so it has some specific rules about scoring. So there's the standard profile at which sort of weights positives and negatives. It'll, these all weight false positives, false negatives differently. And then ne true negatives, right? Or the other true, po true negatives. Um, correct predictions versus missed, predict missed anomalies. And so then there's like a lower reward for false positive and then a low reward, reward low for false negative version of these. Um, and this is the scoreboard. Uh, so the scoring code is all going to be here in this repository. It's interesting. Yeah, blob P1. Uh, so okay, this this is Ian's speculative update to the README. Okay, so there's the main paper. Okay, let's unsupervised, that's the science direct one. Main paper covering NAB and Nementa's HTM based on detection algorithm, NAB white paper, and then the original publication. There's like so many publications here. One, two, three, four. We've got this one, this one, which is the readme that points, these actually going to this. Evaluating real-time anomaly detection. This paper. Unsupervised. Okay, this is another. This is the same one. This is Science Direct. Yeah, so this is this one. Um, I might just take this out. Since it's already linked... I should take a note. I should be taking notes. Hold on. Okay. Okay, it's almost dead. Uh, extra paper link. And, and there's a lot of papers linked here. Uh, like, I'm confused about which one. I'm also going to say lots of papers. Which, which one should I read? I'm sort of doing an overall review of this also. Um, okay, we encourage you to publish your results on NAB and share them with us. Please cite the following publication. Oh, I guess you sort of need this. So I guess that's why the extra paper link is there, because, uh, but maybe this would be better if it were, I don't know. The scoreboard caveats, look at all these. Doo -doo -doo. Please see the wiki section on contributing algorithms. For us to consider adding your algorithm to the NAB repo, it must meet the following criteria. Open source, work with streaming data, process data in real time. So that's the that's an important thing. In in real time, you can't batch it. It's like one bit of the data at a time. And you get 
the next time step and then you give us an anomaly indication right then. Next time step, anomaly indication. It's, uh, so that's different than most deep learning systems. You must be able to fully replicate your results. We, we must be able to fully replicate your results. So that's where this, this comes in. Uh, no, no, no. Where was I? Yeah, I was looking at contributions. Now I am. Um, go back. Detectors and the updated readme. Are we allowed to do multiple levels of time scale so the out will, output will be delayed by the longer time step? You mean um, like different aggregations? A 10 kilohertz writing on a 10 hertz signal. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. That's a good question. Let's see. Work with streaming data and algorithm. Must run online as data streamed in and not in batch as necessary. I don't think it matters how it does it. So, but the criteria is you get one data point at a time. If you decide to aggregate it, you'll have to make that decision on the fly. So if you decide to, yeah, uh, what different finding the aggregation settings usually that's really important when you're especially dealing with sequential data is as aggregating it um but i think for this we're relying i mean we we want them basically we want these algorithms essentially to have no prior knowledge no domain knowledge at all so of the data and if it does do something to the data i think it has to do it sort of live <clears throat> so if it decides to apply an aggregation and update its next for its next update its model for its next prediction, it's going to have to go back and process and you know keep access to that data and reprocess it in a batch format. You know, um, so it'd be a pipeline that produces the answer after the pipeline processes it. Uh, well, I guess you could say it, could, it, can, it can go back and reapply a certain aggregation and relearn. I don't think there's anything that keeps any of these algorithms from storing data and then, and then running back through it as it, just to update its model as it goes along. And I think that's essentially what LSTM does. It runs batches and then it adjusts in real time and reruns the batches so that it can update its model in real time. So if you rerun the batches using different aggregation settings, that's fair game. Just, it can't run in batch, that's the thing. It's necessary the algorithms are computationally efficient to processing streaming data. Uh, o of N, the following algorithms have been tested on NAB and do not meet this criteria. Oh wow, I have a stand-up meeting I almost forgot about. I can't believe it's only 10 o'clock. I have a stand-up meeting in 10 minutes, so bear with me. <laughs> I'm going to get my, my stuff set up.